everybody, Salty Sweet Ren here, and I am back with the Grunkle Dating Simulator. And I am so sorry, it has taken me so long to get back to it. It's taken me this long. I got sidetracked by other stuff, and my my channel, my reaction videos, have been getting hit with like a bunch of copyright strikes and stuff. So I don't think I'm gonna be doing any more of those. My reaction videos, I might do it for when the new season of Doctor Who comes, just because I love the show so much. But don't expect, like, don't expect those videos to stay up for very long or anything. But, um, anyway, it actually discouraged me from doing most of my videos, including the Grunkle Dating Simulator. But now it's back. And, actually, I'm recording this before I, um, I'm recording this before I upload the last episode I had recorded, which was actually months ago, I had recorded the last episode for Ford's, um, for Ford's side of the story, for, for, for the Ford route, um, and oh my gosh, I got really emotional, I think, but, um, I'm gonna, like, after I record this, I'm going to go back and edit that video and everything, and hopefully I'll upload it, and then... This is probably going to come out a couple days after that. I don't know. Should be around then. But anyway, I finished Ford's route. So, now, we're going to do Stan's route. I don't know how different that's going to be. I don't know how well I would get along with Stan. But, uh, I know that if we check on our car, that leads us to check on Stan. So, I see your smiling face, Ford, and I'm sorry. I already did your route, though, so I'm gonna go hang out with your brother, I guess. After Ford leaves, Mabel rolls away with her pig towards the living room, and you head out of the house in search of Stan. The mystery shack should only have four main sides, but you feel like you've made your rounds past five of them before finally seeing your... your absolute wreck of a car. You swear it looks even worse than it did when you crashed it. Honestly, that would be an impressive feat, because my car looks horrible already, so. Stan stands before it, hands on his hips as he looks at the large wooden S that's made its indent in the car's hood. How bad is it? Can't tell yet! Not till I get this letter off the hood! That S never did like to stay in place! Mystery hack, huh? Look, if you're gonna insult me... Oh, you are reading the sign. I'm fixing that later, alright? Just avert your eyes. Don't look at it. Alright, so. Gonna do a lot of Stan's voice. My throat's already a little bit sore for, from something earlier. But I'm gonna do this anyway. So. Uh, offer to help him or let him do it himself? I'd probably offer to help, I guess. Guess we should fix it as soon as possible, then. Sounds good to me! Give me a hand here, would ya? Stan directs you to help him push the wooden S off the car. It stalls a little in its own dent, but with another firm shove, its end meets the ground. Alright, that's good. Stan gives another push with a grunt, and it tips, falling completely to the ground with a whoomp. Now that it's free of its burden, Stan lifts, up, Stan lifts the dented hood of the car to take a look inside, he hmms and huhs and rubs a hand over his chin in thought, walking over to his toolbox and grabbing a tool before walking back, still assessing the damage. Yeah, this one's gonna take a while. You've got parts that need replacing. Not to mention she's not gonna look so hot after this. Not unless Ford's got the tech squirreled away somewhere that can smooth out these dents. Hey, if he's got that, I would actually send you my actual car to see if he, you could fix that stand, because seriously... I know he brought my actual car a few times, so let me explain. My actual car, it got in a wreck, and it's so badly dented on one side that we've taken it to the three separate car shops, and each one has said, like, it'll cost $3,000 to fix or more. Maybe it's just impossible to fix. And the car was worth $2,000 when I got it. That's the thing. So I would either, like, I would be paying more than I paid to buy the car to fix this car, like I've actually been told, if I get another if I get another hit on that side, that's it. Like this car is done for. Like that's 
Like, that's it. There's no way I can get my car fixed, basically. So if Stan could fix it, that'd be impressive. That'd be very impressive for me. My car's actually a huge wreck anyway, because the engine is, like, really rain-sensitive, like, to the point where, like, it starts, like, jerk- Like, there was one time when I was driving in the rain, it started, like, jerking in my hands, and I thought I was gonna get in a wreck after that. The mirror fell off, the rear view mirror, so I can't look behind me anymore. And, um, just everything about my car is terrible. That's it. My car is just terrible. The more he tells you the situation, the more this all sinks in. You really are stuck here. Stan spots your worried frown. Hey, Ren, right? Look, I know this sound. Look, I know how this sounds. But with me on the job, you'll be all set back on that road in no time. You think so? Kid, I know so. I've even got a plan to get those replacement parts of yours. Might not be able to clean up all these scuff marks after I'm done, but she'll run. And hey, so maybe you've got to stay a couple days. So what? There are worse things to get str- There are worse places to get stranded, believe me. I get just a little bit lightheaded doing Stan's voice for so long because I can't really like see what's on the screen that low, but still off on doing the voice. In fact, I'd even say the Mystery Shack is the best place to get stranded. We've got all sorts of stuff. We've got all tons of stuff for people just passing through. Merchandise, magic, mystery, uh, any other M words. Mayhem. You get the idea. Stan tosses the tool in his hand back in the toolbox, exchanging it for another. He works for a while longer in your silence. Me metallic clanks and the occasional heavy breath, all that mixes in with the sounds of the outdoors. You stand by, awkward, uncomfortable, and a little useless. Can I help with anything? Know anything about cars? Uh... No. Stan straightens, cracks his back, and sets down the tool before a cat cleaning casually against the nearest load-bearing surface. He wipes his forehead, lets his hand fall to his waist, and gives you an assessing look. Hmm. How about collages? Tall tales? Improv? Yeah, I think I can handle that, but what does that have to do with this? You gesture at your stranded car, held in limbo between life and death by nothing other than Stan Pine's car expertise and a little luck. Nothing! I was planning on having you help me and Sue- Help me help Sue's around the shack! A favor for a favor! What do you say? Well, it's more interesting than helping Ford with his pest problem. You accept. I would probably disagree with that, but... I'm also not very cut out for monster hunting in real life, so I'm sure once I'm shown the ropes on how to do this, I would be okay. I would be, be able to figure out how to do this, so. All right, follow me. You follow Stan back into the mystery shack, passing by the showroom and getting a glimpse of an energetic figure leading a flock of tourists through a veritable sea of obviously fabricated oddities. You hear the words, and this is a ninth wonder of the world. Right here, right in the mystery shack. It's what makes this place world famous, dudes. Stan notices your pace slowing as you listen, tosses an explanation back for you. That Zeus! During, during operating hours, he's the mystery shack's one and only Mr. Mystery. I told him he didn't have to keep the shack running while he's on vacation, but the kid's got a passion for the role. You interested in this kind of stuff? I was thinking about going on a tour. It feels weird now that you're staying at a tourist trap, though. And you're kind of going to poke fun at the exhibits. Harder to do when you have to live around your tour guide. It's fine, really. Nah, I think I want to give you a tour of the place. You'll get one from the founder himself. You ever hear one of my plugs on the radio? Uh... You weren't really paying attention to the radio during the drive, just taking in the Oregon scenery. I actually don't even listen to the radio when I drive. Maybe I'll turn on, like, Spotify on my phone or something sometimes, but... See a sign's pointing to this place for over a mile down the road? Um... 
Again, you're pretty preoccupied with the Oregon scenery, but you guess you did see some signs with question marks on them. That's some vague advertising. Just seeing what works! Bumper stickers, huh? Ha! Still got what I'm for! Anyway, follow me, folks! Well, folk, get ready to be amazed! Stan starts leading the way back you- Stan starts leading you back the way you came. You trail behind him, a little skeptical, but definitely curious. Didn't you say the founder would lead this tour? Is Seuss the founder? Stan laughs. What? No! I'm the founder! Built this place from the ground up! Well, more metaphorically speaking, I mean, the house was here, the junk was here, but I was the one who spun this place into a wondrous house of mysterious junk! I mean, you get another cup of water for this. I'm already halfway, more than halfway done with this current cup. Okay. Stan gestures with his arms like he's smoothing out a rainbow. You're not very impressed. Prepare to be amazed! You're still not very impressed, but his energy gets you hoping you'll be amazed anyway. There's a tour group in the showroom right now, so I'll be taking you out in a different cycle that completely misses him. We're starting in the gift shop. You enter the gift shop, a simple room crowded top to bottom with standard tourist souvenirs and merchandise. You see t-shirts with question marks, mugs with question marks, and pretty much everything has question marks. In one corner of the room stands a lumpy attempt of a statue labeled The Founder, recognizable as Stan only by the nose and glasses. This room usually comes after I butter the customers up into buying things, but since you are staying a while, I have plenty of time to sell you stuff later. Take a look around. If you see an impulse buy, make it! Nothing like trusting your instincts! So, definitely gonna ask about the founder statue. Yeah, should have asked Mabel to carve it. You gotta admit that every version of me has got a charming smile, though. Let's see. Um. Jar of eyeballs? Thought we sold this thing years ago. Ha! Nah, I forgot to put a price on it. Just has a dollar sign on it. Stan takes a dark marker and squeezes in a $9.99. Then he goes back and makes it $29.99. That jar's got a lot of eyeballs! <laughs> Classic Stan. Okay. I'm also going to ask about the employee of every month. Seuss has always been the hardest worker in the place. It was only naturally handed over to him. Um, I'm gonna definitely go through all this, so, Aztec calendar. I absolutely know how to read this thing, and you should buy it! Freezer full of iced goods. Just because you're staying over here doesn't mean you get to sneak over here for a popsicle! I get to do that, but that's because this used to be my place, and I get founder benefits! I also get founder dibs on the pineapple ice pops. Okay, the t-shirt. Who doesn't look good in a souvenir t-shirt? They're great for layering. And they've got the characteristic Mystery Shack question mark on them. What makes a Mystery Shack question mark instead of just a regular question mark? You ask too many questions. Or do you? He says that last part in an exaggerated tone that betrays it as a sales pitch. This guy has no subtlety. Pyramid of Mugs. You can't actually take that one out of the stack. I glued them together way back when. Secret business trick. And you're telling me because... No one will ever believe you. Then they'll try it and the whole stack will fall to the floor. You notice the you break it, you buy it sign on the wall. And then the pine tree hat. Dipper used to wear one of those. Seuss tells me they sold like hotcakes after Ford tossed his journals into the bottomless pit. Funny, those events have no correlation. Journals? Bottomless pit? We'll have a chance to swing by the bottomless pit later. It's a prime spot on every tour because the troublemakers always accidentally trip in. 
And I get to lead the tour without him for 20 minutes. I'm getting... Should have seen the look on your face. At this point, I'm done looking and my throat is very much hot. So I'm going to go refill my water really quick. Alright, I am back. Got a refill of my water. <sighs> Took a sip of it already. Okay, so I think I went through all of this. Let's see, piano statue at... Alright, all of that. Yep, I looked through all of it. So, done looking. You sure? Well, I think the tour group... Blah. Well, I think I hear the tour group heading out of the showroom anyway. You heard the voice, okay. Now, most tourists don't appreciate my, I mean, Major's artistic genius. By which, I mean my artistic genius, because I, because I remembered you're gonna help me out today. You don't think a money-making wonder like the Zaz Crotch had a boring 9-to-5 office job, do ya? You think it up when you wonder, why hasn't anyone found the Sasquatch? Could it be that its name has been mispronounced this whole time? Anyway, just let me know when you're soaked up when you've soaked up enough inspiration from this room, because you're gonna need to use it right after. Oh. What just happened? Okay. <laughs> Alright, come on. You're gonna see what makes this place a mystery shack instead of just the shack. We're making another attraction for the showroom! Alright, oh boy, this is gonna be interesting. You follow Stan through the living room to the kitchen, where stuffing and animal parts are strewn across the surface to your left. Stan pulls out a thick needle and spool of thread, and as an afterthought, adds a couple of nails and a hammer to the pile. It seems a little unsanitary to do this right across from the fridge, and has the potential to look almost gruesome if it weren't so oddly cartoonish. He steps up to the workplace and pulls at the googly eyes that have been, pull that have been glued over the glass, lifeless glassy ones of typ typical of taxidermy. Mabel's contributions to the craft project remain firmly intact. Huh. That's what I get for letting Mabel bring her stash of sa scrapbooking supplies. That's one more thing to add to the backstory. <laughs> Classic Mabel. Backstory? What? You, th you don't think tourists are dumb enough to believe that the thing you're selling them is actually what you're telling them. Ugh. That thing you're selling them is what you tell... <clears throat> tell them it is just like that, do ya? Because if you do, you'll be set to do business in Gravity Falls. Anywhere else, though, customers take a little more work. See, every good piece comes with some kind of story. Or if you're Poindexter, some kind of lore. Horror stories work pretty well with a... Because with enough suggestion, people can always find ways to spook themselves. Done in four years, it's kind of an art. Stan appears nonchalant, but you can see a quiet pride within him. Let's see, um... Sounds hard, maybe? Because, like, you have to, like... Like, it takes a lot of time to think up a story for stuff. Like, as a writer, like, I know writer's block gets to everyone. Could Even just making up a story, like, like thinking it up is one thing, but then being able to actually sell it, like, make it into something like people actually want to hear is another thing. So, sounds hard, I'm gonna say. That's why I'm here, to make sure you do it right. You're still doing all the work, though. You said you've done this for years? Always had a knack for it, even when I was a kid. Sure, there was a little learning curve involved, but I've had, and I've had a few unhappy customers over the years. Stan pauses, seemingly to reminisce, and a, smi and a mixed smile grimace on his face tells you he probably had many, many unhappy customers. But mostly I've had, run a great business on telling lies. I mean, stories. You're learning from a true master, kid! So what should I ask? 
Why don't you run this place anymore? You work like you're still part of this place. What is your original vision for the shack? Um, why don't you run this place anymore? Stan's grin melts into something softer, maybe a little bittersweet. My brother wanted to drag me off on the trip with him. Couldn't say no, and I couldn't just close the place, so I left it all to Zeus. He practically grew up in this place, you know. Definitely wouldn't have entrusted it to Wendy. She's usually the cashier around here in the summer. It's weird having to explain all this to you. I keep thinking you already know all this. I do already know this, but not me in the game, I guess. You work like you're still a part of this place. You can take a man out of the mystery shack, but you can never take the mystery out of a man. Specifically, me. Which is why I'm back to work even though I don't have to. 30 years of the same routine will do that to ya. What was your original vision for the shack? Vision? Make money. Whatever vision do you need? But over the years, sure, I've used the mystery line for advertising. Who isn't curious? Who doesn't want to be amazed? Kids are the most skeptical of the bunch, though, let me tell ya. Once they hit about eight or nine, they love trying to prove it's all fake. Then they get older and realize there's nothing good left in the world unless you pretend there is, and everyone pretends along with you because they're all desperate. Stan turns his attention back to the workspace, and he knows once more the daunting selection of items that lay upon the table. It's not the number, but the variety that makes you unsure of how you're going to craft something out of this. Yeah, I don't know what you're going to do with this stuff. Surprise me! Oh boy. Stan walks off to the side to, you guess, do some work of his own. You're glad he's not going to watch the whole way through. Um... How am I going to approach this? As many matching parts would make something a little too cohesive, I think. Especially, like... If I've gone through there, like, you would see, like, that place, the Mystery Shack is pretty wild. But, like, if you have something that's too, like, non-cohesive, like, there, you couldn't really figure out what that is. So, a nice mix of matched and mismatched, I think. I think that's what I would do. Like, it's, it's just wild enough to be out there with all the other Mystery Shack stuff, but it's still cohesive enough that you could come up with something, I think. So... A nice mix of matched and mismatched. How should I keep this? Um, I actually do know a little bit about how to sew things together. So depending on like what this stuff is made of, hand stitching. I actually do know a little bit about how to do that. Okay, you have a base to work off of. What next? Um. some scope to details. I don't know if that would actually occur to me, but huh. Colorants from the fur to accent the googly eyes? I don't know. Um. I never really tried my hand at sculpting, but I do like coloring, so I think I'll go with that. Hey, Stan! I finished! Good enough! Oh boy, that doesn't sound good. Stan picks your disturbing creation up gingerly. So, what's the story here? Give it to me! Uh... Just have fun with it, I guess, so... This is a fiskworkin' of fish squirrel chicken. Stan nods appraisingly. Sounds like you got the hang of this. All right. This thing's about as close to show ready as it'll get. Wait here a sec. Stan carries the showpiece out of the room. After a few moments, you hear his footsteps return and he comes into the room with two cans of pit cola. Stan sits one down at the dining table, his condensation starting a slow drip onto the table's surface. He waves you over to join him, and you slide into the seat across from him. Nothing like a cold one to finish up the day. Cheers! My throat is going to be so sore. 
if, if you go back on my channel, I did this I did this fan reading for what would Tesla do, and the next day I tried doing a stand voice for one of my coworkers and just tore my throat up to the point I could taste blood. Probably gonna happen tomorrow, but oh well. Stan's voice is a fun voice. He picks up his can, gesturing towards you with it as he leans leisurely back in his chair, and you watch as he takes a sip. It's a nice looking sip, and now you're staring. You pull over your own can and pop it open. So, got any questions for me? Talking tends to ease me into a new place. Might do the same for you. Um... I'll ask about the exhibits first, I think. The showroom already seemed full when I saw it earlier. Why make more? Tourists love variety! Put a sign advertising a new attraction, they'll come pouring through the doors! When I started this place, I didn't think I, you know, like making these. It used to be just another thing that made money. Now I'm stuck with it. Guess 30 something years of routine will do that to a man. Stan sounds gruff, but it's a fond gruffness. Sixers says keeping familiar habits helps too, so I've kept it up. You think I could sell some of these as art pieces? Probably, yeah. Yeah, I could blame up to buyers and sell them at even more ridiculous prices than I usually would. Um, he brought up Ford, so I'd probably ask about Ford. Is Ford usually like that? You mean trying to fix what ain't broken and not making trouble? Nah, he was a good twin growing up. You're the troublemaker, I can tell. Stan laughs. You have no idea! So, tell me about yourself. Stan laughs nervously. What is this, a first date? Well, uh, I... Pines! Sam Pines! Imaginator! Town darling! Used to be proprietor of the Mystery Shack! He pauses, and stays paused. You give him an expectant look that wants him to continue, and he clears his throat, nervous. What, you were serious? I don't, uh, get this often. Long as I can get people to listen to me is when I'm selling them something. And even then, it's tough luck! The last time someone listened to me, they tried to eat me! Can you believe that? I barely got much meat left on me! Man, keep going. You can't just end it there. Sam gives an uncertain smile, which becomes a full-on grin, and he laughs. Alright, I'll tell you. So, you see, there's this irresistible thing called revenge. Stan tells you a tale of a road trip, a mountain full of mummies, and a woman who is secretly a spider. You don't believe a word of it, but you find yourself enjoying it anyway. Stan knows how to hold his audience in a decent suspense, and he seems to light up whenever you laugh at the right parts, grinning along with you. Before today, you never even heard of Mr. Mystery before, but now you feel like you're really seeing something special here, one-on-one -on -one with the man himself. You could ask about his past... Would this be too much prying at once? Or would it be okay? You know what? I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna go for it. You're really interested in me, huh? Or do you ask everyone these kind of questions? Okay. Um, mainly interested in him or interested in everyone? Like... I mean, really, I'm not that interested in everyone, but if I get along with someone enough, I do get interested in them, so. Alright, ever heard of smuggling bugs? No. <laughs> exactly, that's because everyone in the business is good to keep it secret. Really good. So why am I telling you? I'm out of the business. I don't care. This absolutely isn't. Isn't so that if the authorities question you, you'll get false information that leads them off my trail. <laughs> right. 
right. Sam loads you up with false information that may or may not contain kernels of truth within them. It's surprisingly hard to tell whether the crazier parts are embellishment or the real deal. Stan tips his head back to get that final sip of pit, then sets his empty can down with an air of finality. Well, Ren, you did good for your first try. If you feel like helping me around again sometime, return the favor on the car, let me know. You nod, and Stan gets up to leave when you remember something. Wait, I still you owe... I still owe you the price of admission, right? For the tour earlier? Mm, nah, don't worry about it. Gives me something to hold over you if I need it. He says that and he leaves. But even from what little you've seen, you feel like Stan's not really the type to hold that over you. At least, not for anything serious. This tourist trap might have more to offer you than you thought. Okay, I hope that went well. Looks like this is actually working out. Okay. So, I'm going to stop the episode here. And I think that actually turned out pretty well. So, Stan's going to kill my throat. I can tell you that much already. I'm going to lose my voice doing Stan's route. I know, like, at this point I was already literally swooning over Ford. Like, like with that, with that big grin he did during the Mothman adventure. Stan, he's a cool guy. Stan's a cool guy. Maybe eventually I'll start doing that same, like, swooning, like, oh my gosh, like I did with Ford. I don't know, though. But, anyway, I guess I'll just see where this one takes me. So, I will see you guys in the next episode. Bye!